What up, what up, what up, and welcome to the beatmajors.net. All right, so today our focus is reverb. Uh, what is reverb? Reverb basically um, adds, it, it's, it's an effect that will add depth and fullness to, you know, a vocal recording, um, any type of instruments that you're using, um, just any, any, any recording or any uh, sound that you have that just, that just sounds really dry and really just you know, blah. Reverb is one of those effects that can be overused, which can muddy up your mix, or it can be used just right to really give your mix that wow. So today I'm going to show you guys basically how we use reverb and how it affects or helps our mixes and how you can take these same tricks and apply them to your mixes and your music production, or even if you're doing vocal recording or things like that. The, this trick or these tricks will help you um, take things up another level. So, um, but let's go ahead and get right into it. So right now we're focusing mainly on the guitar effect in our, in this beat. And basically with this guitar, um, you know, we, someone, someone played it of course, and we took it, looped it um, and, and made it, you know, our own thing out of it. So with it, I'm going to basically just play the guitar really quick so you can kind of hear it. And then I'm going to show you how we applied reverb to make that sound uh, stand out a little bit more. So here's the sound without reverb or any um, any crazy effects. <laughs> So as you see, that's mad dry. If you hear it in a beat, you can be like, man, what is that? So reverb, we added a reverb and basically all DAWs have reverb. So if you're using Logic, anything else, FL Studio, you have a reverb. They kind of all work the same sometimes. Some of them are different, um, but we're basically working with the stock FL reverb, which is called the Fruity Reverb 2. Basically with the reverb, as you just heard, that, that guitar loop is kind of, dry um when we applied the reverb what we did was um we just slapped the reverb on there and kind of tuned it in our own way so let me let me show you what it sounds like once we slap the reverb on it <laughs> Now, of course, there are other effects, too, that, like I said, that we put on there um, to make it stand out a little bit more. But uh, we, so we added the reverb um, and with the reverb, you know, I'll start with some of these uh, knobs so that you, I can kind of explain to you what they actually mean. So first you have, you know, your high cut. The more you turn it up, the more high end you're cutting out of the 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 the, the signal. Um, the low cut, same thing. The more you turn it up, the more low end you're cutting out of the reverb itself. So. What I'll do is I'll turn these all the way up and then I'll let you kind of just hear what happens with that. So as you saw, when I turned them up, the, 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 the effect is not really there. You don't really hear it as much. So when I go back and I turn them back down, at least the high cut, let's see what that sounds like. You hear a little bit more of the higher end uh, in the, of the signal. So that's basically what that does. Now, if I turn the low cut back down to where it was at, let's see what that sounds like. You hear more of the low end too. You know, you kind of get a balance. It's like a balance. You know, you didn't, the, the, the guitar loop doesn't have a lot of low end, but that reverb gave it a little bit of lower frequencies to uh, stand out to really make it a prominent sound since that is the main sound in the beat itself. So um, next we have here, which is pre-delay. Now pre-delay basically is uh, a setting of how long it takes for the, the reverb to, 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 to uh, activate. So what I'll do is I'll turn it up so you can kind of hear. So let's start. I always like to start real, just broad, abruptly with it. So we're turning all the way up. Sounds nasty. Sounds terrible. That's not something that we want to be listening to in our headphones. So we don't really mess with that too much. We use it sometimes. If we use it on like a snare or something, we'll have the snare hit and the reverb just 
hit like a, a, a milliseconds later, not, you know, too much. Um, so the next knob we have is the room size. Basically, this is how wide the reverb is going to sound. So if I turn the reverb size all the way up, this is what it sounds like. <laughs> It sounds like you're standing in the middle of the mix, I mean in the middle of the room, and you don't really get that full effect because it takes so long for the sound to echo out or to, to expand out. By the time it's, it's out there, it's gone. So you really don't have to you turn it up as loud as you know that is. So we kept it at a nice, um, about a 60%, I want to say. Um, so next we have is the bass multiplier. Um, the bass multiplier is basically how much bass is being added to the reverb effect. Uh, this knob we don't touch, we just keep it at its normal setting. With the bass multiplier, like I said, it just adds a little bit more uh, bass to the reverb. So I'm gonna turn it all the way up again, how we do, and we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna mess with it in so you, so you can see what it, what it does. Now, as you saw, when I turned the bass down, it basically stopped lingering as far um, re or resonating as long as it did. Um, that's basically, like I said, again, you're taking the body out of the actual effect itself. And that's the reason why I said we don't really mess with that too much because this reverb serves, serves a specific purpose for us. Um, you have crossover, which is something we have not gotten, gotten into just yet um, with this specific reverb. So... Like I said, that's something that you guys can try out at home. Um, dampening, um, I'm going to show you what that is. When we turn that all the way up, basically you get this effect. Now with the dampening, as you can see, as you can hear, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, with the damp, the dampener basically it's 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 making everything sound as though you're in a tight closed uh room which you know sometimes you might want that but sometimes you you know most of the time you don't really want that you want your sound when you're using reverb you want to make it stand out a little bit more again reverb is for depth and fullness so the next one we have is the decay now the decay time basically is how long the reverb will resonate. For this specific track, we didn't want too much reverb resonating. We just wanted that sound to stand out um, a good amount. So basically what's happening um, is I'm gonna show you guys what happens when I turn the uh, decay up. And we have it set about 1.4 1, 1. seconds, so it resonates for 1.4 seconds. So that's that's another thing you can do too is sometimes, like I said, when we use it on like snares or things like that, we won't have it resonating so long. So we'll turn the decay time down just slightly, um, but it depends on the track also. Next we have the dry level knob. Now the dry level knob is the dry signal, which is the guitar before it's being affected by the reverb. So what will happen is if I turn this down, this is what we get. We hear more of the reverb than we hear of the actual sound itself. So when you turn the dry level down, you're basically saying, OK, I only want reverb out of this sound. I don't want the actual sound to stand out as much as it is. That's basically what the dry signal is for. You can turn it down so that you hear more of your effect or you can keep it up high so that you can get a balance between the both. Again, something else you want to mess with. The last thing or second to the last thing we have here is the wet level. The wet level is basically the signal of the reverb itself. So how much of the reverb is going to be um, applied to the sound itself. We usually leave the wet knob where it's at, but I'm going to turn it up so you guys can understand what I mean here. <laughs> So as you hear again with the wet knob you're basically getting the you're getting more of the reverb um over over uh the actual sound itself kind of the same purpose as the dry which is kind of why it's called the wet because 
the drive basically you're taking out the actual signal itself that's supposed to be sent to the the reverb but then with the wet you're sending more of the the reverb to the signal so that's just something that you have to mess with yourself again like i said those this is all trial and error here um so our last knob here is our stereo separation now this one can be it can be tricky we use this knob a lot um it just depends Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we'll just put a stereo enhancer as we did here and allow that to, uh, you know, uh, enhance that signal. But we didn't send the reverb to an actual bus today or on this actual specific track. We used the reverb and then we put a stereo enhancer on it. The stereo separation knob is basically how wide um, the signal will be. You can either have it wide or you can have it in mono, basically where the reverb will just be right smack dab in the middle we turn the knob all the way to the left which is basically widening the signal so we want the reverb to kind of have a stereo enhanced uh feel and sound so that it's kind of a background thing and it's not really noticeable in the middle of the mix it's not in the front of your face it's like in the background so that you hear it when you have headphones on you hear it um when you have the headphones in more than you hear it if you're just standing listening in front of a speaker or something like that. So I'm going to show you what this knob is for. I'm going to turn it to the mono side first and then make our way over back to the wide side. So let's listen to it and see what happens. <laughs> Now we're in the middle of it. Now I'm going to make my way back over to the wide side. Now, as you hear, the, the guitar is a lot more wider. Um, as far as the effect, though, not the guitar itself, but just the, the effect um, period of the reverb is a little bit more wider. So now the guitar sits in the middle, but the reverb is 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 panned, you know, is stereo enhanced. So it's kind of like it's on the side of you as far as the reverb goes. So, again, like I keep saying, these settings are not settings that you need to follow. These are just settings that get you to get you started to get you going to get you you know to get you to get you uh to start getting the hang of this 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 specific effect here so take these tips um apply them to your music production and if you got any value out of this and or you learned anything today definitely hit that thumbs up subscribe and after you subscribe hit that bell button so you miss no more tutorials all right until next time peace